Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we look at Tales of Zestiri the X, episode 18. So, I'll warn you guys right now, if because I know some of you watched my reviews before you watched the episode, I know that. Do not watch this, at least in the beginning, or pay much attention to certain parts where they start talking about Bessaria stuff, which is, namely, when you start seeing these images flash up on the screen during the episode, because it's a spoiler for, like, all of Bessaria. I just had about like 85% of this game spoiled for me toward the end. I had a little bit of the ending spoiled already for me for Tales of Biseria, but this will, you know, basically just blow out everything and tell you, hey, this is what happened to the end of the game. And I am not happy about that, to be honest with you. I think that was a really easy way to avoid that by having just kind of tidbits of information, not fully show characters and situations that happen at the end of the game and then talk about exactly what it shows and like I don't know why they decided to do that that was such a stupid move on whoever designed that but whatever um this episode at least we had you know Rose actually becoming a squire which was I thought was pretty cool uh the whole sequence was really well animated I really thought it was really nice I don't like the fact how they talked about how her being a squire now you know see the difference in the game is that it does it does give Saray more work to do as a person, as, as an actual shepherd. But at the same token, you know, because he gets stronger and stronger as a shepherd, the toll on his body is actually not that bad. And this series, what we actually have is we have apparently if the shepherd actually dies, it kills off all the squires that are associated with him. I'll tell you right now, I played the game. I never heard them ever say that any of the squires will die if the shepherd dies. That's just me, though, because, I mean, they, they even have uh, a certain character at one point get rid of the, the uh, whole pact with them, and, you know, that's that doesn't make sense to me, honest to God. Uh, especially if you think about it in the sense that they're supposed to be giving him power, so why is it that if, you know, he dies, they're going to take all of his power and die, too? Like, w w what's, I don't understand how they thought that was that makes sense in the, the grand scheme of things. Maybe they say, oh, you know, it all of his energies, and then you die, but whatever. Um, yeah, I, I didn't like it, obviously. <laughs> Uh, another thing that was really cool though was the whole fact of when they actually teamed up together right here and fought against a dragon's malevolence like there was a dragon that was dead inside a church and when they went inside this church they actually saw this is when they formed the squire pack with one another and together they were able to you know destroy the malevolence of the dragon that was there which even though it's dead apparently was oozing out non-stop things of just hatred and, and overwhelming kinds of concepts of, of darkness in his heart or whatever. You know, Malevolent still is a little bit overused in, in Tales of Zestaria the X, a little bit. Like, I mean, I know it was a big part of the games too, don't get me wrong, and it was like the main concept. But I swear to God, for some reason, the way they talk about it in this show, it's almost like it's... It's almost like a joke. Like I talked about, I talked about this in my rants when, uh, the other the other week, where I said that you could almost have a drinking game of malevolence, but it would probably kill you because of the sheer fact of how many times they say it during the episodes. Like honest to God, they say it so often. Um, probably the the best part though of the whole thing too also was the ending, which uh, pissed me off. Yeah, that, that I say that's why I say the best part because it really just pissed me off. Um, this is something that I thought might happen, and I thought it was it sounded corny. To me, when I heard about it, in my head at least. I was thinking, like, uh, I think it was two episodes back when he was thinking that he could talk to Alicia using his mind, but apparently he was too weak at the time to do it. You know, now he's able to talk to Alicia, who's in Lady Lake right now, fighting off against a horde of tornadoes and stuff like that from probably the, the uh, Great Calamity. You know, she, he, what is this, like a cell phone in his head? Like, come on, why was this necessary? I don't understand. You know, I don't want to, I'm not trying to bash this show, but I'm telling you guys and girls right now, compared to the game adaptation, this is so much weaker. I mean, animation-wise, awesome. Fight-wise, amazing. I mean, this whole, the whole sequence during that whole Malevolence thing with the dragon was awesome. It was really a, a, a great spectacle to watch. But I honestly am just so tired of the show now. I kind of wish it'd just be over already. Um, and that whole, in the, the very beginning with the whole Tales of Best Series style, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll just warn you guys, like, in case you haven't seen their, the, the video yet. It's a big spoiler for, since what happens to the main characters, um, you see Megalu, you see, of course, Banfu, but you also see, um, Velvet, who's, of course, the main, uh, heroine of Tales of Best Area. And you kind of have, you kind of see what happens to her. And they don't do it, like, they don't do it in a way that's like, oh, okay, they, you know, maybe you could think it's not exactly how you think. No, no, they... They full out, they full out spoil what's gonna happen to her at the end of the game. So I'm just warning you guys and girls right now. 
don't pay that too much mind. You know, if you were thinking about that, you know, not after the fact, more so you heard the review now and then you realized it. I apologize for that, but I have to kind of tell people in case because I, I, like I said, I do know several people that do watch this before they they actually watch the episode. I don't really understand why people do that, but you know, people can do that. I'm okay with it. You know, that's that's my viewership and stuff like that, so I'm okay with that. Anyways, guys and girls, um. I don't want to say this was a bad episode, I'm just not going to say it was a great episode. Uh, for the fact that, I mean, yeah, okay, like always, animation's great. I'm not really ever expecting animation to be bad at this point. Uh, music once, once was amazing as always also. I think that it was at least better paced than some of the episodes we've been getting so far, but I just don't like the way they did the whole, you know, Tales of Mysteria stuff in the beginning, spoiling the whole game, essentially. Uh, that was a big, big, stupid move on their part, and I, I will say that it was very foolish. But over the, you know, other than that though, I really did like the episode. Like I said, it's not, it wasn't that bad. Anyways, guys and girls, I will talk to you guys later. I will probably review the Al Oni movie coming up. It came out today. I'm probably gonna review that in the next few hours. So look forward to that. Anyways, guys and girls, have a great blessed day, everyone. Bye bye.